Okay, so this is a building I built on the bonus footage of the DVD. So if you want, and if you're on YouTube, my bonus footage is going to be 5,000 on up. So if you're new to my series, I always name these conventionally. So the first number stands for uh, chapter 1. And then the second number uh, transverses into the video. So chapter 1, video 2, chapter 1, video 3, etc. and so forth. So my bonus footage is going to be within my playlist and it's going to be like 5,000. And those are things that I cover as far as modeling goes. Because I don't want to dirty myself with modeling and texturing in the same class. It always turns out bad. You either concentrate or one or the other. But certainly they do correlate sometimes. Um, in this case, I wanted to talk about scale of the model. And I also want to talk to you a little bit in this video about um, things. Things like exterior versus interior and planning your model, planning your textures. Okay, let's take this for example. This is my exterior model. So I'm running up on this building just like this and I see this model and in this area over here, this is what it's going to look like on the interior. Okay. Well, there is a big difference. One, you got to start thinking about what you can do inside your level. Okay, can can you actually look out these windows? These are actually windows. Okay. I, in those areas, pretend that there are textures, and those textures are going to be um, maybe some broken glass. And on the interior, they're going to be wood, and it'll look like the door or window right here is barred uh, with maybe a sheet of plywood or something. Okay, think that way. Well, if that was the case, on this model, I would have to have something like this, and if it was an exterior shell of the building that you're running into, it would look something like this. So that is why we commonly use something in, in an engine like maybe Unreal, we'll give that for an example called BSP, and BSP allows the, the shading of both sides of things, okay? And then if you look at windows and stuff like that, they're going to be called static meshes. So let's take this for a static mesh example, a real simple one. So this is a static mesh made in Maya. I put it over the top of this, and now all of a sudden I have the ability to see both sides. Okay. So things that have dual side show up inside the engine. How I did this in Maya, I turned on backface culling. So get kind of used to having backface culling on and having the, the idea in mind that things are not double-sided by nature. If you make them in Maya and import them in an engine, they are not double-sided. That's why very little buildings are made in Maya. Mo mostly some of the, the blocky buildings like this would be made inside the engine using BSP and the BSP tiles over and over and over again, okay, using the texture. But then the little static meshes things, those are the important stuff later on down the road. Those are the ones that kind of make and break the level uh, because those are your assets that you kind of build up on. Same with doors. Let's say this is a door. Well, this door, if you look in some levels, You'll, you'll notice that there's not, there's a variety of doors, but not every door is unique. So if I was to use this window effectively, I would not, in my texturing process, model um, how many windows, nine-ish windows for this, and then texture each one individually. No, that, that's backwards thinking. You model one or two variations of the same, and then you texture them as one or two variations, and then you place the same model over and over inside your level. Okay, so it's things you have to kind of think of. So for right now, we're going to worry about uh, concentrating on the interior of this. And then later on, maybe the exterior. But keep note, these are very abstract 
ways of thinking because still you have to kind of deal with the fact that things are made in the engine uh, that cannot be produced in Maya. And mainly Maya's uh, role in it is to make some of the static meshes like this one, the doors, some of the trim, the piping, you know, those little tiny uh, static meshes things that go on the interior of stuff. Think of buying a house that is barren of furniture. Well, that house can be purchased in the engine. You make that in the engine um, in most cases. And the things that are inside here, like the table, the chairs, the everything else, those are pieces that you make in Maya. Unless they're abstract. And if they're abstract, like this wall would be round or it would have, it would be complex, so complex it would be impossible to make inside the engine. Then those are the pieces that are very special and those are made in Maya. All right, so this is just mainly a pre-lecture for our texture. We'll get started on the interior UVing process of this building. And we're going to treat it like we're just modeling this for Maya, not for an engine. And I just want to introduce you to those concepts because I'm still going to abide by some rules. And that way it doesn't feel so weird later on. Alright, so let's get started in the next video with the UVing process on the interior of this building.